briefly today about compassion. What is the point of it? The word compassion actually means with suffering. Isn't that interesting? We think of passion as being something that we want. You know, we want more passion in our lives. <laughs> and yet we're asking for suffering because it's one and the same thing. It actually means suffering. That's what the Buddhists say, isn't it? They have passion, like desire and suffering as two parts, the yin and yang. Or is it the yin and yang? I don't know, two parts of the same coin, but it's what they want to escape from. Desire and suffering in order to reach nirvana, which is some sort of state of bliss. And what message does that give to us about passion? Or the flesh or the incarnational experience that somehow we want to suppress it or overcome it or transcend it. And this can show up for us in life when we experience suffering and how it shows itself. You know, the things that really affect us all. Anxiety, for example. When you when you just find you're going through a period of anxiety and you can't do anything about it and you can't talk yourself out of it or reason yourself out of it. It's just there. And my, my belief is that a spiritual practice should be something that, that enables you to be more fully human rather than to have to suppress who you really are and try to escape it. Otherwise, you're just on this endless cycle of not feeling good enough, berating yourself. You know, this isn't really happening. This is only happening to the person. And I'm really all that is. I'm essential being. So if I just remember that I'm essential being, I shouldn't be experiencing this, this anxiety. And that should help me deal with it. It's not real somehow. It's or it's it's, it's uh, an illusion. It doesn't feel like an illusion when you're going through it. I think they call this spiritual bypassing. Even if you are strong enough to do that, even if somehow you have mental ability to do it, what's really happening there? Are you just pushing it down and denying it so that you're actually suppressing or repressing something? Well, that's not good for mental health and well-being, is it? We know that. It'll only find its way out some other way. Or you harden yourself and you say no. Or, you know, you, you kind of get annoyed with other people then that are around you that are doing that because you're wanting to tell them. Don't you realise it's not just, you know, you, you just start being a, a bit of a, you know, activist for, for non-duality and saying, remember the, what's real and what's not real. And, and then there's a censorship of it, whether you're doing that to yourself or whether you feel that your teachers that you're listening to are doing that to you. So you, you're just left kind of nursing your anxiety and feeling a bit of a failure for it, feeling that you can't say that that's how you're really feeling because you shouldn't be. And self-judgment comes in. And then we see how important compassion is. Compassion for the self and compassion for others. So compassion with suffering means that we don't try to escape the experiences that come. Yes, knowing that there are the everlasting arms underneath the ground of all being and that this is passing, all things will pass. God never changes, all things are passing. That might help you through, but not trying to escape the experiences that you're having. Not wishing it over before it's, you know, achieved what it's there to achieve or taken its course. The only way out is through. And there's a reason for that, because the very experience of it makes you more of a human being rather than less. You know, the thing that's central in Christianity that's really good about Christianity is that you've got a human being at the centre of it, not some avatar who is exceptional, who had these abilities, superhuman abilities, or was able to meditate themselves into a state of being blissful all the time and 
the things that affect the rest of us didn't touch them. In the garden, before when Jesus, before he was arrested, you know, he was really suffering, really struggling. It says that he sweat great uh, tears, didn't he? Sweat uh, tears of blood, drops of blood in his anguish. And he was pleading, please, if possible, do I have to go through this? That's not some Zen doubt master. That's a human being. That's you and me when we are going through an anxiety attack and we are experiencing anguish. He knows, he, understa he understands. That's the way of the Christ. It's not trying to avoid. It's not trying to be uh, divine and, and, and suppress. It's, it's not being at, at war with oneself. It's fully human, fully divine. And this idea of saying, well, it's not, you know, I, I, I am, uh, there's only oneness, there's, there's only one. Therefore, it doesn't really matter to respond to other people's compassion, in compassion. Like if 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 a philosophy or a, be a belief makes you detached, because that's a coping mechanism to not feel the pain of suffering of of yourself or the world, then that's the same as numbing something with substances or whatever. To avo it's avoidance rather than full immersion into the human experience. You say no, it's too painful. I couldn't cope. It's too painful. What you find is that compassion has no bottom, you know, it's just depth, it has this depth, it just opens the heart even more. And the empathy that one feels help, makes you feel more connected to others. Non-duality says there aren't any others, there's only one being, and that's the wrong way to understand it if it makes you independent, fiercely independent, isolated. That's not non-duality. Jesus took, used the term the kingdom, and the kingdom was a community kind of concept. It's a field, yes, but it's a field of oneness, but, but communion, community. And I know myself that the things that help me most when I feel really anxious isn't just trying to self-talk, the self-talk that, it, you know, it, it's not really happening, I can step out of it, I can go into meditation and bypass it. What helps me most is just somebody saying something kind, somebody turning up at the right time, maybe saying something to help me feel better, and even if it doesn't work, is the fact that their compassion, their kindness, in wanting to try and make me feel better, just lifts my spirit, just helps me to know I'm not alone, not alone. And so as human beings, we're created for community. And yes, we go within to find the truth. And we do this searching within that takes us away from the crowds and the superficial stuff. But once we find the truth of our true identity, then the oneness that we know, that is really what non duality is about, sends us out to connect with people even more deeply at a real level. We don't, we can't do the superficial thing anymore, but people somehow know what suffering and pain does is it breaks your heart open, but it enlarges your heart and you find that people are drawn to you because they just know that you're someone who knows. In the same pain, in the same way as people love Jesus because they know that he knows, he understands. He didn't go onto the mountaintop, you know, to to uh, transcend it all, to not experience the depths of uh, human suffering. On the contrary, the story says, and the Christ story is that he descended into hell to redeem it. He had to go through it to redeem it, not bypass it. And so to be a full human being, to have the full human experience, one has to similarly go to the depths of hell. We we just follow that template, that archetype pattern 
of the Christ in our in our journey to uh, wholeness and enlightenment, our journey home, the Christed soul. It's it's not good news, folks, but it ends well. It, 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 there's no bypassing to be had, otherwise it's in, in disingenuous. It's not real. It's not real. But there's a joy to be found in in pain, which is, sounds like a paradox, but it is because it connects us more deeply to one another. So compassion with suffering or suffering with. Life will come with suffering. Your experience of, of incarnational life on this planet will come with suffering. But also we're called to suffer with others. Even if we know there are no others really. Go with the story. Play in the field of uh, the dream. Don't try and exit the dream through, you know, sitting out. Like I'm not playing. Because that's what we signed up for. We signed up to experience life to the full. And that's where we find joy, peace, fullness of life. Just being real. Keep it real. I hope this helps. Take care. Thanks for listening. Bye for now. God bless.